Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for being here, I appreciate it. This week I'm working on a very, very big canvas. It is a 36 inch by 48 inch gallery up canvas and working with five colors this week. The first being the metallic cobalt blue, which is one of my favorites. And also going at this canvas with a bit of intent and carefulness, we'll call it. Um, I wanted to go at this for more slowly than typical because it's so big, it is actually the size of my dining room table. So I wanted to lay down a first bead of paint um, just to see how well it would spread initially before leading on to a second color. And now continuing on with the metallic silver, which is a very pretty color. And actually, um, uh, while I think of it, the, the all of these paints and acrylics are by Artist Loft and are pre-mixed acrylics. So I mixed nothing, which was super great for me because it saved my wrists from being broken with all the pouring medium and acrylic paint mixing. Um, it is also very fluid, so compared to what I'm used to, it is a bit more thin, but that's okay. It's always worth a challenge to try something new now and then. Uh, but anyway, I lead it into the pour with the metallic cobalt blue, the metallic silver, and this nice cerulean blue, which I will come back to in a few moments here. Now, as I pour down this cerulean blue, I'm just curious to ask if any of you have made any canvases or pours of this size before, and if so, how did they turn out and what technique have you used? I'm super curious as to which types of pours you have done and if they worked out. So um, let, me know, let me know in the comments below to see how those ones of yours had worked out. Okay, and going in with my fourth color being the light blue. And as you can see, there's a bit of a common theme here being lots of blue with my uh, metallic cobalt blue, the cerulean blue and this light blue which will eventually lead into a metallic white as my swiping color. Just to get some contrast at the bottom of my painting where I know I'm going to lose some color anyhow, but here is my best attempt at a bit of an ocean theme canvas, which was a little bit tricky to pour over top of just due to its sheer size. So I had to take out the leaf in my dining room table to just make room for how big this canvas was. And of course, make my family eat on the floor for four or five days. So. Here we are with more blue and um, this was quite a bit of fun. It was a bit nerve wracking to be honest because it's been quite some time since I made a canvas and pour this big with so much paint, not wanting to wreck this big, beautiful canvas. And I also wanted to see how the paint reacted to being on the canvas initially to see how far it would stretch and kind of settle. So. Again, this was my first pass at all colors, aside from the white, and going back to fill my gaps with my cerulean blue to make my my color a bit more wide, which I needed more paint on top anyhow. So my intent was to go light off the first pass and go back and fill my gaps later on, making sure I had enough color with all the four of my primary colors so far. And now for those of you who are going to ask me later on in the comments, I used about 75 or 80 ounces of paint in total on this pour. It also took about five days to dry because it was so big and it held so much weight once I was finished. But it was quite a challenge. I wanted to make sure that I had enough paint. Um, the last time I made a pour this big, I had to stretch and stretch and stretch for a long, long time making my design and wanted to avoid that at all costs. So it was, again, heavy, took many days to dry, but it was worth it in the end. And it was quite fun to make in the first place. And now with this portion here, I'm just actually going back to my, my metallic cobalt blue to really try to level out the amount of paint I had at the top, but also make it a bit more symmetrical with an even line. So. I didn't want to have to push this around too very much with just gravity and deciding on how that may play out. So I wanted to come back to it and make sure my lines were about as straight as possible with my free end pour. And they can hear me, here is me leading into my metallic white at the bottom. But in the end, I wanted to, again, just want to try to make those lines as straight as possible with as much symmetry as I could.
Okay, and here we are just giving the big old canvas a bit of a tilt down towards the top of the canvas where the top is going to be once I'm finished. I wanted to balance those lines out a bit more. Again, this time with intentional gravity to make sure that the lines were about as straight as possible. And funny enough, this to this point in the actual video did take me around 30 or 40 minutes to get my paint where I wanted it and where I was happy because I was pretty paranoid about how this could work out or not work out in the long run because of the sheer size and how much paint I did need. So it was a bit of an exercise for me to kind of get over those jitters and just get to pouring and not worry about it. And here we go with the first swipe with a wax piece of paper. Now I found that wax paper is one of my favorites because you can see through it. For me, that's a big thing, especially on this bigger canvas. I was leaning over so far, and that's my wife giving me a great hand um, across the table because it was so big, I couldn't really see how far away I was, and I wanted to make sure my swipes were as even as possible. And as I watch this video back, it is quite funny to see myself hunched over so far on my table um, because I, luckily for me, I'm quite tall, so my arms are long as well. So this worked for me in the long run slash outcome of how this pour were, was going to work. Rather than go the vertical length of the, of the canvas, I went the horizontal length of the canvas. And I knew I needed to go from top to bottom, but I couldn't see where the top was with my wax paper. So my wife did a good job at making sure all my points were touching off my paper. And my son did a good job too with the garbage can with my wax paper going directly into the garbage. So there she is again with that is again making sure my white is touching all the way across and which gave me a chance not to wind up with too many streaks that were unnecessary. So all in all, it had worked out. And now one thing I had noticed, um, actually in, in a first pour, that was a test to see how these, these colors would react to the way in which I decided to lay them. So I went with the cobalt blue, silver, cerulean, light blue, then metallic white. I decided to uh, give it a test run on a smaller, smaller canvas. And I saw that it actually brought out some purple between, I would imagine the cobalt blue and the combination of cobalt, silver, and cerulean made a very pretty light blue. So you'll see that a bit later on in the tilting, but um, I found that in doing a canvas this big, I wanted to make sure that I had enough paint, but also wanted to see what it did before I decided to lay down my colors first and get a big old surprise of mishmash, mushy paint. So I'm glad I tested to begin with and I'd, I'd recommend in any, any canvas, but especially this size, to test your swipe colors and how they'll react. Now going in for my last swipe, which was a mini swipe on the edge there. Um, I didn't use any additives for this pour. It was a straight acrylic pre-mixed um, by Artist Loft. Again, no Floetrol, no oils, no anything else but the paint itself. No pouring medium, nothing is diluted, no water. I wanted to see how this worked out on its own. Now, having said that though, I would love to try a canvas of this size or maybe a touch bit smaller um, with a similar approach, but with some flow trawl to create some lacing effects on a future project or swipe later on to see what the differences would be in similar color combination, uh, but more so to see how it reacts to the actual additive compared to just acrylic. Okay, here we are going off on some tilting finally. So thank you for sticking with me this far into the video. I appreciate you. Now, when I do a painting of this size, I wanted to find out initially here where the paint was. That's why I sat it down. I wanted to find out just by feel where the swipe paint, which I pulled closest to me, ended up. And I wanted to make sure that I got it back down towards the middle to begin my actual tilts to make my, my composition. Okay, and as far as the titanium white goes as my swiping color, I don't mind the fact that it's gonna fall off and go away 
at the beginning. So that's simply used for my swiping color to get through my, my blues, making my cool swipe pattern. And as speaking of patterns, when I make my swipes, rather than relying on straight lines to make my design, I want to always incorporate a bit of an S curve or a U curve to create some flow to the pore itself. Now for me in this case, swipes are one of my favorites and I find that by creating a design within the design works very well. And I find S curves for me, I really enjoy them. And I think give a lot of character to a piece that looks cool already. So this one's going to a very good home and I'm sure they'll enjoy it. But um, no, making sure that you have a bit of character again with inside the initial thoughts of what your design should be is always important. And now as far as the tilting goes, I decided to go in a bit of a clockwise pattern because all of my paint to this point was in the very first corner we just saw uh, prior to this one. So I'm going in a, 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 a to me, a correct order uh, for where my paint flow and my paint volume is. So if I were to, for example, tilt the opposite way, I'm now stretching all of those patterns and possibly losing more paint that I wouldn't dump off this corner first. So I'm intentionally with a big piece here going around in a circle, making sure to get enough coverage on each corner first before moving on. Okay, now as I go in for my last corner here on this big 36 by 48 inch canvas, what are your guys' thoughts on this pour overall? What do you think of the pour itself and the color choices I used and how it actually shook out? I'm very excited and happy that the purple managed to sneak in with a bit of a surprise to me. I was quite, quite surprised to see it, but to be honest, it complements the blue quite well. And I find that the swiping color worked really pretty and the purple helped quite a bit as well. And now as a last favorite, if you have come this far in the video, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, click that like button if you have enjoyed this video to help the video spread to more people that may enjoy it. And this kind of content for critical pouring. I really had a fun time with this one, although initially it did scare me quite a bit. So once I got going, it was like doing a 12 by 24 um, just bigger, right? So here we go with a bit of an overhead look of, of the wet result and there is the cool designs made off the swipes. I really enjoyed the gradual progression from the lighter white slash blue into the cerulean blue um, in the end here. So it gives off some very subtle lacing as well. That wasn't intentional, but you know, acrylic pouring is a very cool art. And sometimes when you come up with a plan, it has other ideas, so it's always fun to see what a pour is going to wind up being in the end. And I was very happy with how this one shook out. So um, a very great experience doing a 36 by 40 painting again. And if you have enjoyed it, check out this playlist in a few seconds here. And we'll see you again in the next one.